here comes everyone. Welcome, everybody. Just give this a minute or so for, for everybody to funnel in as Zoom catches up and as Facebook Live catches up. So I've got 30 something people here so far. With uh, more joining. All right. Looks like uh, we're pretty stable. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, as you know, this is the week that Oshkosh would be. And uh, we're not there, neither are you. Uh, so we thought we'd put together some events to uh, to, to share what's new and to, uh, and to talk avionics and, and, and pilot stuff with you. This session, uh, today's our advanced day, uh, advanced flight systems. This is is uh, on advanced panel by advanced flight systems. And as I already mentioned, this is part of our uh, of aviation week. That's what uh, EA has put together to sort of celebrate aviation this, this week. That would have been Oshkosh. This is our second day of programming. Uh, yesterday we did a thing with EA about Dynon certified. We just got done with a seminar on the AF5000 series from advanced. This one's about advanced panel. Tomorrow at the same time at four o'clock, we'll be doing a, a virtual booth visit um, about Skyview HDX. And then on Saturday, we'll be doing a virtual uh, hangar happy hour. Be a little more casual, come join us for that um, if you're available. And all of the rest of the events this week are at four o'clock, starting with this one. The way this works, uh, you're all muted and uh, so, that, so that Rob can present well. We will stop periodically for questions and there's a few ways that you can ask questions. One is that you can raise your hand in Zoom. It, to do that, you can click on the participants button on, in Zoom itself. Uh, and then there's a little hand raising mechanism or button there. If you are on the app or on, on, a, on a phone or a tablet, it's uh, I think often under the, the three dots menu. Uh, you can also type in a question uh, or, uh, into Zoom directly into the, under the chat button. And on Facebook Live, there should be a chat feed underneath the video stream, and uh, you can ask questions there as well. We have a uh, staff of uh, most of the advanced crew, I'll let Rob introduce them in a minute, that are there uh, to answer your questions, uh, ask your questions on, on your behalf. So hosting today or presenting today is uh, Rob Hickman, uh, who's the founder and president of Advanced Flight Systems. Uh, he's going to, he'll tell you a little bit more about, uh, advanced and advanced panel, uh, but he won't really brag about himself. So I get to tell you that, uh, among other things, he is the 1990 or the, the uh, sorry, the, tw uh, 20, I think it's 18, uh, inductee, uh, for, um, for, uh, the EAA hall of fame for the home. Builders. So, uh, Rob is kind of a revered guy, uh, around the industry and, uh, around here in particular. And with that, Rob, why don't you uh, take it away? Hi. So here today, um, we have Ken, our head software engineer, Sean, hardware software engineer, Jeffrey's our hardware or mechanical engineer, and Jonathan, I think, is here, tech support and sales. So they're all here to answer questions also. So today we wanted to talk to you about advanced panels, uh, what is an advanced panel? Why is it different from any other panel you can buy? What's new and why you should put it in your airplane? In the last 20 years since Dynon and Advanced started designing and selling avionics, we've seen a major change in the home-built aircraft market. Home-built aircraft kits have now become much easier and faster to build with pre-punched holes and quick build options. Home-built aircraft have proven to be modern, safe, and reliable alternative alternatives to expensive factory built aircraft with better performance at a fraction of the cost to purchase and maintain. Avionics have also become much less expensive, amazingly more capable, and increasingly more complicated to install. About five years ago, we realized that, that 
the typical new the typical new aircraft builder needed a much easier and cost effective way to install avionics in their airplane. That is where we came up with the advanced panel based on our advanced control module. Let's see if our there we go. So this was our solution to the whole idea. This is actually the heart of the electrical system for the plane. It's based on electronic circuit breakers. The main power and ground comes into this from your circuit or from your main uh, battery contactor, and it makes all the avionics plug and play. So everything plugs into this. It controls the flaps, the lights, the RS-232 ports, all the audio, everything goes into that. So this kind of this drawing here is kind of an overview of what an elect airplane electrical system looks like. Notice we have the advanced control module in there. Um, all the various pieces plug into it. All the blue lines are the Dynon uh, SV network. That all plugs into it. Um, the big advantage to this type of system is that not only is it easier to install, it's easier to maintain. If you have a problem with a radio or a component, you can actually unplug the harness, send it to us or look at it or take it on the bench. So it isn't all bundled together in a whole tightly wired panel. It's much easier to work on and upgrade. If something new comes out in two or five years, you can literally unplug the old radio, plug the new one in and it'll work. It really simplifies and future proofs your panel. So this is a RV-14 with Dynon Skyview HDXs in it. It's wired the traditional airplane uh, avionics way. Notice there's a whole sea of circuit, mechanical circuit breakers on the right side of the panel. Takes up a lot of panel space. And let's look at the other side of it. So this is the back side. Notice all the bus bars, all the wires. Um, that is where all the electric, uh, all the power comes in. Um, it's heavier. One of the main differences also is let's take landing lights for example. With a traditionally wired panel, you come you have to use heavy gauge wire from the circuit breaker to the switch, and then the switch out to the light. There's connections for ring terminals, fast ons at the switch. Um, not only does the switch have to carry the full load amperage of the circuit, um, causing more wear and tear on it, but also the wire clear out to the panel where the switches are has to be heavy gauge. With the advanced control module, all of the switching is done through the advanced control module CPU. So each switch only has one low voltage, low current wire. They're all grounded. So it's less wiring, simpler, less things to break, come loose. So this is an RV-14 with an advanced ACM module. Notice you have much more panel space to mount all your avionics, um, much cleaner. Notice our switch modules in here. Those switch modules are our custom switch modules with circuit boards. We have different modules. So if you decide I wanna add a PMAG, you can unbolt the master switch module and then add one with a PMAG switch. So it's really easy to upgrade or change. Or if there's a switch problem, you unbolt the module put it back on. They're all on a ribbon cable, so there's no complicated wiring to get into. And if you look at the back side of this, notice our advanced control module on the, on the left, on the lower left-hand corner here. That's where all the harnesses go in. And on the upper corner, where you saw all the wiring in the traditionally mount, uh, wired RV-14, there's nothing there. So with a traditionally wired panel with circuit breakers, if a circuit breaker flips, you have to look over and see it or notice it. Um, the way you do that on an advanced panel with a Skyview or AFS screen is it's on a software page on any of the EFAs. So on the top here is the AF5000 electrical page. You can see all the different circuits. Not one big advantage, and below is the HDX. So one big advantage, if a breaker trips, you'll get an audio alert in your headsets you can go to the page then and it'll actually show. In this case, the taxi light is tripped. Notice it's in red. What you can do is highlight it, go down to the reset button and reset the breakers. So that is the way you con control each circuit with the electronic circuit breakers. 
The other advantage is you can actually see the amperage going to each device. So you can tell if a light bulb's burned out or something's not working without having to look. In this case, you can see like the right landing light's drawing 0.9 amps. If the bulb was burned out or a wire was broken, it would be zero. So it gives you a lot of information on each circuit. At the top of these pages, notice it gives you the total current. In this case, it's 35.8 amps. So the module is actually supplying 35 amps to the whole system. So troubleshooting is much better than mechanical circuit breakers and more reliable. So we get a lot of questions on how does a circuit breaker trip? So this is all the traditional circuit breakers, the clicks-ons and the Tyco circuit breakers, and this is a trip curve. This is the time in seconds and the load current rating up on the left side. So you can see where each different circuit breaker trips. The red line is what an ACM does. So we program this in software, looking at time, looking at rate, and that's where our circuit breaker actually trips. So this is our um, factory here. This is where there are six panels or five panels here getting ready to go out. We do all the testing, all the assembly. We pre-configure all the EFA screens so that everything just plugs in and works in your case. One new thing we've done is we actually laser all the labeling is done in house and that's kind of a picture of our laser. So should we ask any questions on advanced control modules or does anybody have any yeah, if anybody wants to ask a, a question, if you raise your hand That's either in, let's... you can raise your hand either in Zoom or you can type out a question in Zoom or Facebook Live. Let's see, it doesn't look like there's anything on Facebook yet. I don't see any hands raised. Okay, well we can keep nope. moving forward. Here's one. Here's one. Uh, okay. What's what's the reliability right, reliability of the uh, ACM? It says CPU, but uh, I think just in general, how reliable is the, the ACM? So um, we have shipped over 300, and I believe the only failures we have had are installation when people break uh, uh, the main power lugs off. In flight, they've been extremely reliable. Um, it's actually laid out so that the battery backup runs the PFD MFD screen. So if it was to fail, uh, your EFASIS can, should continue to run and the backup GPS or the main GPS, in this case a Dynon 250 or 2020, is routed through the system. So if it was to go down, the EFASIS should continue to run, the EFASIS should switch to the internal GPS and you should still get navigation. Um, but they have been extremely reliable. The only failure I think we have had ever is um, we had a Vans plane that got extremely wet and it actually flooded the ACM with water. Um, once it dried out, it worked fine. So that is the only problem we've ever seen. So they're, it's one of the most reliable devices we've ever made. Two related questions, and I'll get back to the one about panels. Um, how does the electrical, how does electrical ground work with the unit? And also, um, I guess kind of related in my RV10 currently in progress, what would I need to connect up to the ACM? So the, um, I'm going to back up a few slides here. Let me go over this. I'm gonna go forward. There we go. So these four, so the, the power in the ground, notice this red lug on the left side, that is the main power uh, for all of the avionics and the lights and everything comes into that. The ground lug is all the avionics grounds. So anything that's plug and play, um, radios, navigators, EFASs, all of that stuff use that ground also. Um, lights are generally locally grounded on a block. So you run out to a strobe light or a nav light or a landing light. We provide the power, the return ground power does not come back to the ACM. These four connectors on the bottom are aircraft rear, aircraft front, control sticks, flap trim. Generally you wire those yourself. Aircraft rear connector and we've got schematics later on I can show you. Aircraft rear is where all the lights that go out to the wing, the tail light go. 
aircraft front is the alternator, starter relay, um, cow mounted landing light if you have it, control sticks or the control sticks in the plane, and flap and trim harness. You normally connect those four connectors. The rest of them are plug and play and we provide all of that. Um, there are exceptions to that. The RV-14, we provide all the harnesses for the whole airplane. So we'll give you the airframe harness that plugs into all of those, uh, flap trim, everything's plug and play on the RV-14. And we have built um, pre-made harnesses that you can use to plug into that and then terminate on your aircraft on your end. There's a, uh, a question uh, which uh, somebody asked, do you cut the panels? And it looks like Jonathan already answered that, um, you know, how, how it's done. And in addition to cutting the panels, you know, we help uh, design, you know, locate in, you know, uh, the, the different avionics in the panel and go through all of that with you. So it's kind of a, uh, everything from design to, you know, cutting. So we work, powder. we um, kind of work with you to figure out what you need. Um, once we figure out what kind of panel you want, um, what avionics you need, then we work on a layout that you approve. We have a lot of standard different layouts or we do custom work all the time too. We can use your switches if you really have something you like. Uh, Aerosport RV10, we tend to use Aerosport switches in them. Um, once we work on the layout, Jeffrey tends to work with, every, with you back and forth once we get approval. Then we cut and form the panel. Uh, we do not use the kit panel generally. It's easier just to laser a brand new one and form it than try to li line up the laser on your existing panel. So we do cut, form, and then the finishes, uh, most of them are powder coated. We can paint, we can also hydro dip, which is a decal type um, application. Uh, the carbon fiber ones are normally hydro dipped and then painted clear. So we're flexible and can do any of those different ways of doing it. Uh, the first thing we kind of get a lot of questions on, what kind of panel do you really need? Are you VFR, IFR, light, IFR? And kind of some of the differences. So a standard VFR plane would have a single comm, single intercom. That really is the least expensive way. Um, one way with the ACM is it's really easy to add uh, devices later on. So you could start out simple VFR and then later on say you want to add IFR capability, you could add an approach certified GPS. So we kind of call that IFR light. Um, this one actually has a, GP, a Garmin GPS 175. It's a en route approach certified GPS. There's no comm, no nav, no audio. And so basically it plugs in and it'll give, let you do LPV approaches. It will, does not give you the capability to do ILSs or VORs. And that's really the cheapest way to get IFR. And those units with harnesses and configured are about $4,500. So you take the standard panel price for a VFR panel, add $4,500. Uh, you can add it later. We do a lot of panels where we'll use blanking plates or later on you can take off a blanking plate, add a radio, a second screen or anything. Uh, the next step is really a full IFR panel. Um, that is about 12,500 above VFR. That uh, generally, the big difference there is we have to add an audio panel rather than an intercom. So an audio panel gives you the ability to switch in multiple radios and listen to nav or four places. Um, what we normally use is a PS Engineering PDA360R, which is what this is shown in this bright stack. Uh, that has Bluetooth capabilities, so you can listen to your phone or your iPad for music. Uh, you can talk on the phone through it. Um, and it gives you the ability to actually switch radios and listen to nav. So you have to go full IFR, you need one of those. We add a second radio, which is, this case is an IFD 440, the one below it's an IFD, I'm blocking it, IFD 550, which is the same unit with a larger screen. Um, that gives you full capability, LPV, in route IFR, uh, ILS approaches, VORs in case the GPS system goes down, which it does. Um, that is kind of our full IFR panel. So that's kind of your different prices. Um, we have done panels where you want dual navigators, so it kind of just goes up from there. All of our panels are ADSB compliant, uh, in and out. So you get traffic, weather, and your ADSB out for 2020. So they're all 
everything from VFR to IFR does that. So we work with you kind of figure out what you want. We'll do a lot of VFR, a VFR panel with an audio panel. So it's ready to add the radio later. That seems to be kind of a popular option. Any more questions on that? Radios or navigators or? Yeah, there's a question. Uh, Craig had a, his hand up uh, right as you moved on. So Craig, if you want to unmute yourself and. Uh, yeah, this is back to the, uh, can you hear me? Uh -huh. Back to the uh, ACM module, how lightning proof is it? Has anybody been struck by lightning? Uh, nobody um, has been struck by lightning um, that we know of. Do you do any testing for that? Um, we, have done, we have not done lightning testing on the ACM. Okay. Um, and then another question uh, about the ACM. Somebody inquired the cost and the cost. I guess the itemized cost is uh, twenty seven fifty, as uh, Jonathan responded. Um, but uh, currently, the ACM is exclusive to advanced panels. Or um, did you already do the slide about panels? Nope, panels? I've got that coming up. That's coming up. Yeah. So uh, Rob will be talking about different ways that you can get the ACM um, with an advanced or, or Skyview system. And then uh, one more question here. Um, building an RV10, should I plan to wait to install the upper forward fuselage after I, until after I work with your team? Um, so in my airplane, I've had three panels in it and it really is not that big a deal if the upper fuselage is on. Um, everything mounts on the sub panel in the RV10 behind the panel. And one thing we do different is when you take the screens out of the RV-10, you have easy access to the sub panel. So it's really not a big deal. I would get all the, it might be nice to have all the engine sensor wires run through the firewall. Uh, my electronic ignition is mounted up there, so it's a pain to get to. But I, there's no real reason to wait. I don't think it's that big a deal. And then uh, another question here is, what about an average cost to get a panel and cut for my avionics? Just just the blank cut painted. I'm not sure if we do just just the panels by themselves, but uh, Rob, yeah. So that's that? eight hundred dollars. We charge eight hundred dollars to laser powder coat and label a panel. I just learned something too. I think that gets us current. I think that gets us current with the the questions. Okay, so this is a um, RV7 or RV9, they're the same panel. This is a really good example of um, the customer actually bought it, like the top left-hand corner there. Um, notice there was a blanking plate for a Garmin G5. There's a blanking plate for a 355, which is a COM GPS, and a second EFIS on the right. So that panel was right under 20,000, like you see it there. Um, the next big upgrade you could do really is add a second screen for about $4,200. You could add it and you literally, we send you the screen, you take the blanking plate off, you bolt it in and you plug in the harness. It's that easy. Um, the next screen then shows where the 355 actually went in. That's a GPS comm. Um, he decided on this panel to go ahead and use an audio, a remote audio panel. So it already had it and accepted a the comm, so it's even easier. So you just plug it in. And then the la last step was adding the G5. So that's the full panel. So you can see that was, you know, 33,000. So it's a really good way for you to start, get the plane done, fly it. So for under 20, you can start and then without having to do any drilling, painting, messing up all your avionics, then you can add all that stuff later. So it's a way to defer the cost of that. Any questions on that? Not on that, but there's another good question, which is there are, are uh, on the ACM from Tyler, are there any big advantages uh, between ops on your ACM versus the competitor uh, versus competitors? You know, I think so, one, oh, go ahead, Rob. So the only competitor really to the ACM is a vertical power. The difference is a vertical power unit is just electronic circuit breakers. 
Um, it does flat positioning um, like we do, but you still have to do all, and nothing is plug and play with a vertical power unit. Um, and if you look at the total cost, the ACM is cheaper. Um, the ACM has the, the electron breakers. It has the flat positioning system. The air rink module, our Dynon air rink module is built into it. And it's got the SV network hub. So if you had all of those, um, I think we're about $300 cheaper than a vertical power solution. Um, to make it even more comparable, if you had a vertical power and an approach fast stack, which is kind of an avionics plug and play hub, the difference is the fast stack doesn't handle any power. So you have all these power lines coming out. So the ACM in, in the sense is a vertical power with an approach fast stack hooked together. Um, the big advantages are, you know, we're the manufacturer. It's designed to talk to our EFSs. Um, we test it. Um, it's very well integrated in software, and new features that come along will be integrated in both units. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, what, what Rob said, you know, there are, uh, as, as he mentioned, other products that do, you know, some of the ele electrical stuff, electronic circuit breakers, but you're going to build and, you know, and run all of your own wires. There are also products that you know can kind of that, that are harness systems, but they don't do electrical and they don't really um, truly integrate with the EFIS. So the ACM is the only thing that's electrical, aircraft management, full integration, plug and play. It's kind of it's all of those things. Okay, moving on. <laughs> So this is, um, once you decide, you know, VFR, IFR, what do we want? This is what a typical quote looks like. So you can kind of see, it's small here, um, the different sections, the harnesses, and we have harnesses for probably almost every ma radio made that's compatible. So you want a GTN 650 or an Avidyne IFD 550, um, we have a harness and it just plugs in. So this is what a kind of a quote looks like. Um, it's not sold through dealers. We are the dealer for the whole panel system. So that's um, single source for everything. That way we can keep the cost down for you. So the other thing we will do is if you really have your heart set on designing and cutting your own panel, um, we will sell you what's called a panelist panel. We'll sell you the ACM, we'll sell you the harnesses and the components. Um, this is a full, panel here without the panel. So there's the ACM, the backup batteries, the screens with harnesses. You can see our switch modules down here with the circuit boards and the ribbon cables. Um, any other system you have to wire all the switches, there's a lot of hours in wiring switches. Ours, you literally, when we do it here, we plug in the ribbon cable and we're done. We can wire a complete panel in 30 minutes. So we just pull all the harnesses, plug it in and then test it. So. Um, over to the right is the audio panel here with the headsets, intercom, you can see all the different ADSB, comm radio, all the pieces are there. But we'll, we do a number of those too. So different kinds of panels. Um, we've done lots of different uh, aircraft, uh, the Cub Crafters, this is, these are both carbon Cubs on the left. The top one is actually a powder coated panel, VFR. You can see the Dynon-Com, the intercom, the switch modules, the AP, pan or the AP mod panel. The one below it was hydro dipped. It looks like carbon fiber. It's a hydro dip carbon fiber process. That's a full IFR panel with backup EFIS. So it's got a backup G5. It has two comms, NAV, it's an IFD 440. So that carbon cub can do full ILS, GPS, LNAV, you know, LPV approaches all built in. One neat thing we do is if you have an AF5000 screen, the G5 will act as a backup third AHARS. So you can actually switch to the AHARS for that. Um, below it, this was a super cub we did, is a experimental super cub. This actually has an IFD 550 and IFD 440, so dual navigators, dual screen. That was a really uh, expensive, amazing panel. There's a sling with HDXs in it. 
So Slang Aircraft, VFR panel, and then a Kit Fox. So there's a lot of different um, planes and panels we've done. We've done a lot of different ones. And as long as we can get the uh, dimensions for your panel, we can design it to any airplane. One of the more popular planes recently is a RANS S21. This is a brand new Aerosport carbon fiber S21 panel. So Aerosport products out of Ohio has developed the actual carbon fiber panel. We start with that. We make the inserts, the wiring harnesses, do the engineering for all the panel. So you would get the panel from them, but if you're building an S21, this is gonna be a really exciting new panel. Uh, nothing else like it out there. Very similar to the Aerosport RV10 310 panel they make, which is really popular. It's got the Aerosport switches in it. Um, we're pretty excited about that. And then this is another RANS down below it. So is anybody building a RANS S21 in this group? The, the S21 seems to be one, of, there's a lot of RV repeat builders building them too now. It seems like it's a really popular airplane. Glass Air Sportsman, these are a multiple different Glass Air Sportsman panels we've built. Um, the first one's a full IFR, Avidine 440, or 540. Um, the one, and the, we're the, available in any of their two week to taxi factory built airplanes or were an option. The next one had a, a 175 Garmin GPS. So that's kind of our IFR light panel, we call it. You can see the ACM mounted below in the frame. The tubes are all part of the airframe. And then one below that was just a simple VFR panel. Now we get to all the vans. Um, we have done a lot of vans, uh, RV8s, um, everything, HDX, VFR, IFR, multiple screens. This kind of gives you just a look and we can look at those and different options and way to do it. Um, this lower left-hand corner panel is actually a full screen IFR, dual screen, 10 inch screens, um, Avidyne IFD 440, Dynon Com, so ILS's LPV approaches, that one's actually belongs to a United Airlines captain and it actually won a bronze Lindy at Oshkosh. We've had two of our, two RV8s with our panels in them win uh, Oshkosh bronze Lindy awards. Is there any RV8 questions or? See any RV8 questions, but you do have questions? a S20, you do have an S21 builder. He doesn't have a question, but uh, uh, okay. user BP is, is going for an S21. And if you have any questions, you can raise your hand in, in Zoom, or you can type them out in Zoom or Facebook Live, and we'll get to you either way. This top RV8 panel on the left was actually painted. Um, our customer wanted a Boeing gray, which is a special color. So it was all painted Boeing gray. Lots of options, different choices. We're very flexible on what you want. Kind of customize it so make it your own. RV 14s. Um, the 14, like I said earlier, we provide all the harnesses, everything. So when you order your kit from Vans, you do not want the Vans airframe uh, wiring harness. I think they've discontinued it. Uh, we have our own, it's cheaper and plugs right in. We do plug right into the van supplied wing wiring and tail wiring. So that kind of comes with the wing kit, tail kit. Um, but all of the harnesses, everything plug and play, the 14, we've done a number of those. Um, easy to upgrade later choices. You can see this wood grained one that was hydro dipped wood. That's a repeat customer. He's actually built two RV14s. Both of them had our panels in them. So we can look at those or different choices. It's a quiet group today. Yeah. Notice this one on the right has blanking plates. Um, they were gonna fly it the way it is and then add the GPS navigator late, later.
RV7, RV9, lots of different choices. The second one from the top on the left is actually a um, Aerosport carbon fiber panel. Uh, that is an interesting panel there. The customer actually built the whole panel. He got into wiring um, and it got to be overwhelming. So he called us up and we said, just bring it to us. He brought it to us in just a couple days. Then we did all the wiring, gave him an ACM, plugged into all the devices and sent him home. So that's a good example of a panelist panel that he brought to us. Another panel that we painted red. RV10, so this top plane on the left is actually the AOP, R AOPA RV10. Someone's gonna win that. Um, we got involved with them at the very beginning. It had um, old avionics in it. We stripped the whole panel. We put in the whole three screen. It's got an Aerosport 310 panel in it. It's got our 12 inch AF5700 in the middle with two 10 inches, an Avidine 550 and an SL40 comm radio. That plane, there's lots of videos and things to see online. The, probably the vast majority of RV10s being built have Aerosport carbon fiber panels in them. That's been a super popular option and we can do carbon fiber raw or paint or anything you want on that. Uh, the F5700 EFIS was actually designed for the center of that panel. We, did it at the same time. So it's the largest screen you can get in that panel. So it's a 12.1 inch. There's uh, Tyler's asking, is that the same as Mr. Honeycutt's? Uh, yes. Um, one of these might even be, um, one of those is his, I think maybe, but yeah, he's got an Aerosport 310, three screen, same thing. Um, he did different switches, so I don't think this is Tim's. Tim's, I think, was a separate one. Tim had done some backlighting switches that we did for him. And then just kind of some custom RV4s, RV6s, we can do those. Um, the four and the six were not pre-punched. So we have to fit the panel to your existing panel and drill holes that are a little more difficult, but we can do it. So this kind of shows what you have to do. Um, this is the schematic for the aircraft front harness. So you can see it's this connector. Um, we give you a drawing for every connector and what you want. So you can see these are all the devices. So the key switch goes to it. The alternator goes to it. Um, boost pump, if I get over the way, boost pump and cowl mounted landing lights. So you would wire that. This is the aircraft rear harness. So that's the first plug. This is where the landing lights, the nav lights, tail light, pedo heat. Um, even the pedo monitoring um, circuit comes back to the ACM and to the EFIS through that, so we know if it's working. Um, the ACM also does wigwag lighting. One thing we do differently, uh, there's lots of LED lights out that have built-in wigwag. Um, ours is automatic, and we recommend you use ours because you can actually set airspeed. So you can program it at 100, above 100 knots, the lights will start flashing, or you can override it with a switch. So in my plane, um, I leave it in wigwag mode all the time and at night they just don't flash as you're landing. It's a really neat feature. Notice the ELT also wires. Not many people realize, but the ELT needs power and GPS data. So that's through that connector all automatically for you. Control stick harness. Um, you any kind of control stick you want, whether you want toast in or any of the different ones, you just wire up the buttons. We give you the schematic. We do have a harness that actually just plugs into the toast and grip if you want. Flap and trim. So all the Ray Allen uh, trim motors plug into this connector. 
Uh, there's two motor power wires plus position data. All of that goes back. Our trim system actually is airspeed controlled. So you can adjust it. So the faster you fly, the slower the trim motor, it makes the trim less sensitive. And we also have auto trim in our AP panel. The uh, flap motor is actually positioned. So we put a sensor in it and then you can program the actual position stop points and there's about three different settings on there you can position, you can have it retract all the way, step when it retracts, or just jog mode. So that's all configurable from the EFA screens. And the ACM is designed to work with the Dynon HDX, Skyview, or AFS screen. They just, they're interchangeable. You can go from one to the other. And this is a one of our RV14 carbon fiber panels. So why don't we open it up to questions and see what we can answer. There's a couple in the chat. Um, kind of going reverse. Uh, should I wait to modify the panel attach ribs on an RV7 until after the panel is built? Is it a tip up or slider? I don't know, Richie, if you want to clarify that. Tip up. Tip up. So the difference on the tip up is the tip up ribs, when Vans designed that, no one had dreamed of ephesus. And the ribs <laughs> actually are what hold the panel in. And they come from the sub panel and they land, they hook on right where the ephesus go. So what we have you do is cut off the ribs at the sub panel and move them in to clear the ephesus with a piece of angle. Um, it's in that case, yes, you should probably wait till you get the panel done. Isn't it, Jeffrey, or do we have enough? It's easier to line up. That way you bolt them to the panel and set the panel in and then drill the angle on. But Jeffrey, are you unmuted? Our RV7 expert mechanical. Can we unmute Jeffrey? There we go. Yeah, the easiest way is just to cut the ribs off flush while you build it. And then once you receive the new panel with the new location for the mounting holes, use that to match drill to the sub panel. Um, it's definitely easier to cut those ribs off while you're assembling it though, instead of trying to cut them off flush with the sub panel after. But. Another uh, technical question, uh, do you need a separate sensor installed at the flap motor in order to program different flap settings? So, um, yes, normally what you need to do is put a Ray Allen POS12 sensor and hook it to the flaps. Um, Vans has a kit for the 14. Um, there is an aftermarket flap motor available that has the sensor built into it. Um, that can be used also. I think it doesn't quite have as much torque as the stock motor though. Jeffrey, do you know anything about that? Tyler's asking, he's saying PH aviation? Question That's mark? It. Is that yes. it? Okay. I believe it does not have as much torque as the standard Vans motor though. There's lots of people using it. Um, another more general question from Rico. What's the main difference between advanced screens over HDX? Why would I choose one over the other? So all the back end, the CPU, the memory, the processor speed is all the same. They both use AR touch coded screens. The main difference really is um, AFS screens are a four three ratio. So they're a little taller and not as wide. HDX uses a wide format. Um, other than that, it's kind of personal preferences. There's advantages to both. Um, we re recommend you as you come try both and see what fits you. Um, uh, there are yeah, the some features that, you know, there's features that are in the AFS screens um, traditionally have hooked up to a lot of third party devices. Um, XM weather, if you want XM, the AFS screens support it. Uh, the serial port CO monitors, pulse oximeters hook, but. Um, as far as hooking to the radios and they both work, same devices, same network. Um, a lot of the software in both are the same actually these days. 
Yeah, um, you know, we had the same question in our in our last session. And I always think about it, you know, the, the form factor is the most obvious thing. And then once you get yourself in front of both of the units uh, and use them, you'll see that they actually, uh, the user interfaces are quite a bit different. You know, we came up originally before we uh, joined forces as competitors. So we were always kind of matching each other feature for feature. Um, at least on the major stuff, then as, as Rob said, there are some things that, you know, each system, you know, kind of smaller things that uh, that one will do that the other do, but they do have different user interfaces. They're both pretty intuitive and uh, whichever one you learn first you'll like better is, is what it tends, uh, tends to be. But, uh, you know, try them both and uh, we're happy if you end up with either of them. Yeah. Um, if you got panel space limitations, smaller planes, um, HDX has a smaller screen. They have a seven inch where AFS our smallest ones an eight, which is pretty big. Um, and then the AFS has the 12 inch screen where the biggest we have and Dynon HDX is the 10, but try both. We have them in the office. We have people come visit all the time and try them. So. We're caught up on the questions on chat. If anybody else has any questions, uh, let's see, I will unlock the the mute so you can unmute yourself if you'd like if you just want to pipe up and ask a question um, any idea what the biggest screen I can get into an s21 is a question from that s21 builder Jeffrey the tens for sure will fit um, a 12 might I, I don't think you will get a 12 inch screen in an s21 okay where do you have pic the picture of Jeff's mock up? Yep. We'll back up. There. So that's a 10 inch screen in an S21. Um, without the carbon fiber, it might, I don't, we'd have to do a layout. We could do it and see. The problem with the 12 inch screen is when they grow in um, width, you don't leave room for radio stacks in the middle if you need radios in the middle. The Dynon Com in intercom, that's where they're a lot smaller and you can get vertical mounted. So that kind of works. We've done um, an RV-14 we did with dual 12 inch screens and BFR, Dynon comms in the middle, didn't we, Jerry? Yeah, you can get them with, with the two modules stacked on top of each other vertically. They're a lot more narrow than a standard radio stack. So you should be able to get a bigger screen in there. It's gonna more a factor, where do you put the switches? Yep. Any other questions out there? As you said, Rob, a little bit of a quieter bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any customers doing ACM with a retrofit or mostly new builds only? Um, both. It's probably maybe not 50%, but it's probably close to that. The AOPA RV10 was a retrofit. Um, we, we do a lot of retrofits. What do you think percentage is, Jeffrey? Jonathan? I would have said closer to 30%, but it's still a pretty significant portion of retrofit. There's lots of uh, RVs being sold in the used market, and they all have old avionics and crappy wiring, and it's an easy way to buy a plane strip the wiring and um, it's a pretty straightforward way to upgrade it to something modern worth a lot more money so are there any considerations when you're doing a retrofit is there anything kind of fundamentally different about the way as a as an owner builder you go about it in terms of the way you prepare no i don't think so every i think so there's a question. Uh, are a there lot any of it depends. I'll back up one thing. So um, I retro retrofitted my airplane 
to an ACM and it was really easy because all the wiring and the wing wiring was good and all the light wiring was good. Um, when we've done other planes, we have found a lot of the wiring is not good and needs to be changed. Um, we find telephone wire for trim. Um, we found a lot of pretty hokey wiring in customer planes and it's easier just to rip it out and start over. So that, that is the one different thing. Um, now, if you're inspected. retrofitting a sportsman, that's uh, one thing that we do have nice, where your BH connectors actually, we build yep. those harnesses. Yes, Glass Air Sportsman, it'll plug right in. It's kind of like an RV-14. Um, what is uh, delivery time after ordering? Um, depends. We quote 12 weeks. Um, we've done them much quicker. Um, if it's really complicated and there's lots of back and forth with the customer, it can take longer. But I would plan on 12 weeks. Um, we recently did an RV10, and I think we did it in four weeks, didn't we, Jeffrey? So. Yeah, four weeks is probably the most the shortest timeline that's realistic. If it's um, standard and you know pretty standard, and we've already done it. It's pretty quick. And panelist is even faster. Yeah. Uh, looks like there's another question from Tyler with a lot of avionics out there is there a particular difference or advantage we should know that makes advanced stand out from other competitors would you say it's the ACM the ACM plug and play um, the big difference in panels too is how easy it is to upgrade and support in the future when things change um, we're the only ones that have anything like the ACM so if we bring out something new or radio Avidyne Garmin and you want the latest radio, it's much easier with the ACM. Plus to work on it, if something goes wrong, you can pull a harness out and work on it. It's way easier. And I think one thing we've always done well, and especially so with advanced panel is, you know, we realize, as Rob said at the beginning, that many builders are uh, not super technical, you know, as it was maybe 30, 40 years ago, where everybody that was building an airplane was an engineer or, you know, a, kind of a craftsman type. A lot of people just want to have an affordable airplane because they don't exist unless you want to buy something that's older than you. Um, before my home built airplane, you know, I didn't fly anything that was newer than me. And, um, you know, so we've gotten good at really building to, uh, to for that, that person. So that means, um, you know, it, things like advanced panel where the harnesses are plug and play. But even if you don't do that, even if you just uh, buy an advanced system off the shelf, but then use our harnesses, they're all color coded. Uh, the wires match the manual. Uh, we really do think about, uh, you know, the, the, the average builder and don't assume that you're going to be uh, an in, a, f a full installation shop, which, you know, some of our competitors, that's where they have their roots and they've they kind of come into home building over time. We started there, so we kind of know what home builders expect in terms of uh, ease of installation. And uh, so that's one big, you know, it's not even, it, it's, it's part of the product. It's not in the button pushing or in the features in the product, but it is a huge part of the experience that you'll have as you, uh, you know, stop uh, riveting together, you know, aircraft metal and, you know, that last 10%, which is, you know, often more uh, to get you to a flying airplane. We kind of invented the ACM. Really, it was for customers, but it was also for our tech support people's sanity. Um, before that, it's like an AFS screen or HD Skyview screen has five serial ports. Well, you can wire any device to any serial port, but then you have to go configure it to the serial port that you selected. Um, and everybody, even though we'll do transponder always serial port two, people would wire it to all the different serial ports and they couldn't get it to work. So they would call and how do I configure it? And we, our tech support people were like, which serial port did you wire it to? Well, I don't remember. Um, with the ACM, it's always the same. It's standard. You plug the serial port in, it's connected to serial port two. So it makes our tech support a lot easier too, because they're always the same. Plus we can figure it before it leaves. 
John asks, uh, what kind of support do you provide after the, the panel delivery, after the panel delivery, once the builder is performing installation and testing? So one thing we've noticed that's different, um, back when we, most builders are not super technical. Um, they build, the planes build quicker. And now that we do panels with the ACM, we kind of, we'll get calls on, you know, my engine won't start. So we have really good tech support. We have people in Seattle and people in Portland here. Um, I think probably if you ask around, our tech support's better than anybody in the industry. Um, but since everything goes through it, we kind of get responsibility from it. And we're experienced with stuff. So tech support's probably one of the biggest advantages to buying ours. Yeah, as, as you heard, we can tell you the difference between a tip up and a slider and, you know, what, what you ought to do with your ribs, things like that. You know, we really have deep knowledge of, uh, of, of, of home building, especially RVs in this case. All right, if you have any uh, uh, final Somebody questions. Somebody else asked, does the Vashon Ranger include an ACM? Yes, every Vashon Ranger has the ACM. Yep. And if you have any questions, you can uh, you can unmute yourself now. Uh, if, if you wanted to uh, ask a question or just say hi, uh, you could also type it into the Zoom or the Facebook live feed. And uh, Rob, are we gonna do another of the, sure. the, th the things? Okay. All right. <laughs> I forget where we ended up. So we're going to, for those of you that have stuck around, uh, we're going to do, uh, oh, lead time, uh, Tyler, was, uh, it varies. They quote 12 weeks. Uh, it, it is doable in as short as four. That's sort of like the record time, and it depends on the complexity and the, and the back and forth uh, in terms of configuration and, and, and different options that you might uh, choose and evolve over your purchase process. So for those of you that stuck around, uh, we're going to give away... Uh, an advanced flight systems jacket. It's uh, it's one of these North Face jackets that we originally bought for ourselves to to be comfortable at shows. This is the the Dynon version, but it's North Face. It's an awesome windbreaker. It's my da daily jacket. Um, it's perfect for Seattle, just always medium weather. And uh, and so the way that we're going to do this giveaway is uh, you will put in a number between one and a hundred in the chat, either on the Zoom. So go ahead and do that now, one per person. And if you've already won, you know, please, please uh, don't go again. We will uh, wait for those numbers to come flying through. And, uh, and then uh, Facebook Live runs about 10, 10 or 15 seconds ahead or behind. So we will wait a little bit longer for that. And while we're waiting for that, um, I'll mention that we have events going the rest of the week or the rest of the Oshkosh week, which is through Saturday. So tomorrow, it's similar to this. It's a virtual booth visit where we'll demonstrate Skyview HDX. And that applies to whether you're considering a home built or a Dynon certified system. And on, on Saturday, we're having a virtual ha hangar happy hour, a little less programmed, a little more casual. We're happy to answer any of your questions, just talk airplanes, avionics, flying, and all of that. All right. I'd also like... add that we're right by vans. So if you hmm. come out to visit vans, we're five miles away. So we have different panels here, EFASs you can try. We have our RV-10. So if you're visiting vans, there's no reason not to come visit us at the same time. All right. So now we're going to, I'm just going to share my screen. Let me work this out here. Okay. Here's the virtual wheel of numbers. And let's see, is that going? There it goes. And here goes the spin. That is 17. All right, do we have a 17? 17. You, you got a 17? There's a Jeff. All right, where is that? In uh, Zoom. Let's make sure we don't also have one in Facebook. We don't. All right, so Jeff, if uh, 
you want to uh, private message me in the Zoom chat with uh, your email. We'll Hopefully that's not in. AFS, Jeff. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, empl employee's not eligible. <laughs> if, if you're on the Zoom, you probably have one of these jackets already. <laughs> Jeff, I just sent you a note. If you could just reply back with your email, and we'll get your uh, your address and sizing information. Uh, do you have Dynon panels to look at your look at at your facility too? Yes. Yep. And then we're actually, if you're, you know, if you're not in the local area, we're we're not that far from each other. Um, Advanced is just outside of the Portland area and we're just outside Dino just outside of the Seattle area so you can you know in a in a in a couple of days a lot of people will uh will will hit both facilities if they're up in the Pacific Northwest Clint's asking are you open right now uh we are uh uh you know we're observing you know social distancing uh policies and all of that kind of stuff so uh give us a call uh you know you know don't show up unannounced and we can we can help you out a little better in fact, you know, most, most of the professional staff, uh, just to keep our, our, our buildings, which are manufacturing facilities, uh, to keep people as distance as possible, most of the professional staff, you know, sales, marketing, support, uh, much of engineering, we're all working remotely. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, we're at five o'clock, just about an hour. Seems like a nice time to wrap up. And uh, thanks for joining us. And we hope Thank to you. see you tomorrow and Saturday.